Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this lesson we're going to learn about creating a peer road intersection in Civil 3D. Let's get started. In this exercise, you'll create a three-way intersection and generate a corridor that maintains the crowns of both roads. To create a complete intersection model, you must have a centerline alignment and profile for each of the intersecting roads. The horizontal and vertical geometry for the remaining elements, including the offsets and curb returns, is generated based on the parameters you specify. In a peer road intersection, the crowns of all intersecting roads are held at a common grade. The pavement for both roads is blended into the curb return regions, which form the transitions between the intersecting roads. The drawing for this exercise contains a corridor along each of the intersecting roads. Each corridor is made up of a corridor assembly and a centerline alignment and profile. So let's specify the intersection location. Go ahead and open up your intersection-create-1 drawing in your tutorials folder. Then go ahead and go into your home tab and then into your create design panel. Click the intersections drop down and select create intersection. Now our command line is asking us to select an intersection point. We're going to select this point right here between our two roads. Now this is an intersection point of the two alignments. Now we're going to be specifying the corridor grade parameters. We're currently in the create intersection wizard and we're on the general page. Go into your intersection corridor type, click the drop down, and we want to select all crowns maintained. You'll see in the graphic how that's going to be generated. Go ahead and click Next. Now we're going to specify the geometry of the offsets and curb returns. In the Geometry Details page, click Offset Parameters. Now note that the default parameters are stored in the drawing settings. You can modify the default parameters during the intersection creation process. Now in the Offset Parameters dialog box, specify the following parameters. Under the Secondary Road, we're going to specify a left offset alignment definition. And that offset value is going to be 3.5. Now let's look at the right. Go ahead and change that to 3.5. Now in this checkbox right here under create new offsets from start to end of center lines, we're going to leave that checkbox cleared for right now. Although when this option is selected, offset alignments are created along the entire length of the center line alignment. This option is useful when you need to use offset alignments and profiles as targets for other objects, including other intersections along the same road. Go ahead and click OK. Now we're back onto the details page. Now the next step is, is to select this, Curb Return Parameters. In the Intersection Curb Return dialog box, under Curb Return Parameters, Specify the following parameters. For the curb return type, we're going to leave its default at circular fillet. But for the radius, we're going to change that to 7.5. Now note that in the drawing, temporary graphics highlight the currently selected curb return. Go ahead and right click on the curb return parameters. We're going to click to copy these to all quadrants. This command copies the curb return parameters to all intersection curb return regions. The number of curb return regions is automatically generated based on the existing horizontal geometry. For example, if this was a four-way intersection, four curb return regions would be available. I'll go ahead and click OK. So now we're back to the intersection wizard. Let's focus our attention on offset and curb return profiles in this region right here. Make sure that this checkbox is selected to create offset and curb return profiles. 
To produce a complete corridor model of the intersection, it's necessary to create profiles for the offset alignments and curb return alignments. For this exercise, you'll accept the default offset and curb return profile settings. So I'll go ahead and click Next. Next, let's specify the corridor parameters. In the Corridor Regions page, specify the following options. Make sure that the checkbox for Create Corridors in the Intersection Area is checked off. We want to add to an existing corridor. And make sure that 2nd Street is selected. For the Surface to Daylight 2, we're going to leave it on the existing grade. Now we're going to select an assembly set to import. Go ahead and choose Browse. Go ahead and navigate to your Tutorials folder. Then go to this XML file, Intersection Assembly Set All Crowns.xml. Select that, then click Open. An assembly set enables you to quickly import a group of existing corridor assemblies and then apply them to specific section types. Now, let's go ahead and create our intersection. The intersection is created and new corridor regions are created in the intersection area, as you can see right here. Let's examine the new objects. In the tool space, under the prospector, go ahead and look at your alignments. Go ahead and expand that. Expand your center line, your offset alignments, and curb return alignments. We'll open up our tool space just a little bit more to see everything. At the beginning of this exercise, only center line alignments existed. The offset alignments and curb return alignments were created using the parameters that you specified in the Create Intersection Wizard. Note in the drawing the offset alignments and station labels are blue and the curb return alignments are red. Under the offset alignments, go ahead and expand the first street left offset alignment. Next, expand the profiles collection. Layout profiles for the offset alignments and curb return alignments were created using the parameters that you specified in the Create Intersection Wizard. Let's go about closing these gaps in our corridor for 2nd Street. In the drawing, select the corridor in the intersection area. You'll see that we have grip sliders at the start and end of our corridor regions. Click the 2nd Street corridor. You'll see a grip at station 040. Go ahead and select that grip. Notice how it turns red. Now, in the command line, type in 21. We've now closed the gap between the Second Street corridor and our intersection. Next, let's go ahead and fill in this gap right here. Go ahead and escape out of the command select the Second Street Corridor, and now select Copy Region. Select the portion of the corridor that loops around the site. Now the command line is asking us to specify the Start Region Station or Fill. We want to choose Fill. Now we have to specify the region location. If we hover over our gap, you'll see a red line that appears, showing that this is the gap that's going to be filled. Go ahead and click that area. So now the gap is filled. Go ahead and press Enter to exit the command. Let's rebuild all of our corridors. The Second Street corridor rebuilds, eliminating the gaps. Now. Let's select the First Street Corridor. We want to eliminate this gap between our two corridors right here. Go ahead and select our grip. Notice how it turns red. And then slide it to the beginning of our intersection, which is right about here. 
So that's how you go about creating a peer road intersection in Civil 3D. If you'd like to learn more about Civil 3D workflow tips and tricks, visit AutoCADCivil3DTraining.com and be sure to sign up for future video notifications or click subscribe on our YouTube channel. Again, my name is Charles Ellison. Take care.